already silenced your cell phone or other electronic devices, now is the time to do so. Thank you. Today's second collection is for the reduction of the sanctuary debt. In preparation for our celebration, let us take a few moments in silence to place ourselves in the presence of the Lord.
please stand as we begin our celebration. And from the next three weekends, the gospel, they will bring us a very interesting characters of the gospel. Today will be the woman, the Samaritan woman. Then it will be the, the man born blind next week. And in two and three weeks, we will have the raising of Lazarus. And those events, those characters want to help us how to come to believe in Jesus. But also, we need to be aware of all the blessings that we have in our community. Today, we have like 80 young kids, or 80 kids who made their first confession. And you could see their faces, some of them nervous. Some of them happy, some of them crying when they recognize what they have done. Even though they were a little, little things. <laughs> but those are the blessings. And now we have like 20 candidates and catechums who, are, who wants to be part of our community in the Eucharist. And we have many other blessings that we will hear about. So knowing that God is always walking with us during this Lenten season, let us begin our celebration by saying together, in the name of the Father, and on the Son, and on the Holy Spirit, Amen. may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with you. To allow the presence of God to be in our heart. Let us remove any presence of sinfulness by recognizing our personal sins and humble ourselves, asking the Lord for his forgiveness. Yeah. 
And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. O oh God, author of every mercy and of all goodness, who in fasting, prayer, and alms giving has shown us a remedy for sin. Look graciously on this confession of our loneliness that we, who are bowed down by our conscience, may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Come, please. A reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, in their thirst for water, the people grumbled against Moses, saying, Why did you ever make us leave Egypt? Was it just to have us die here of thirst with our children and our livestock? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? A little more and they will stone me. The Lord answered Moses, Go over there in front of the people, along with some of the elders of Israel, holding in your hand as you go the staff with which you struck the river. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock of Oreb. Strike in the rock, and the water will flow from it for the people to drink. This Moses did in the presence of the elders of Israel. The place was called Massah and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled there and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord in our midst or not? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith to this grace in which we stand and we boast in hope of the glory of God. And hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. For Christ, while we were still helpless, died at the appointed time for the ungodly Indeed, only with difficulty does one die for a just person, though perhaps for a good person, one might even find courage to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The word of the Lord. Thanks to God. And please remain seated. As I said at the beginning of this liturgy, in the next three, well, that last weekends of Lent, we will have a very powerful readings from the Gospel of John that will help us to discover how encountering, encountering Jesus, our lives can be transformed. Yeah, today is a long gospel to the Samaritan woman, but I want you to hear it, the whole, uh, the whole reading, and just to, to follow how this encounter, the very gentle encounter of Jesus with this woman, it will transform the life of her, 
how in this dialogue she begins to open herself to see the glory of God. In this dialogue, she said, I see that you are a prophet. And then later she say, when she's opening about her faith, oh, I heard that soon the Messiah will come and he will let us know about everything. How her faith is growing and expressing and when when Jesus when she asked are you the one we are waiting for and Jesus said I am and she runs to see all his friends and share with them what she knows about Jesus. Proclaiming as a missionary that Jesus is the Messiah. But this, then there is another encounter when the people from this town go to see Jesus and they say, why don't you stay with us? And he stayed two days talking, sharing with them. And these people say, now we believe that you are the Messiah. No, because what this woman told us, because we have seen it. And I hope that by listening to today's gospel, you can see yourself in this reading and also trying to discover Jesus in your personal life. And please stand. <clears throat> said today's proclamation of the gospel is rather lengthy it would be more comfortable and be more able to hear the word of Jesus now would be a time to have a seat the Lord be with you and with your spirit a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John Glory to you, Lord. Jesus came to a sound of a town of Samaria called Sakar near the plot of land that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. Jesus, tired from his journey, sat down there at the well. It was about noon. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a drink. His disciples had gone into town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, how can you, a Jew, ask me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink, for the Jews use nothing in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, if you knew the gift of God who is saying to you, give me a drink, 
you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you do not even have a bucket, and the cistern is deep. Where then can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this cistern and drank from it himself with his children and his flocks? Jesus answered and said to her, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I shall give will never thirst. The water I shall give will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may not be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come back. The woman answered and said to him, I do not have a husband. Jesus answered her, You are right in saying I do not have a husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I can see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you people say that the place to worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Believe me, woman, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You people worship what you do not understand. We worship what we understand because salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. And indeed, the Father seeks such people to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, the one called the Christ. When he comes, he will tell us everything. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one speaking with you. At that moment, his disciples returned and were amazed that he was talking with a woman. But still no one said, what are you looking for? Or why are you talking with her? The woman left her water jar and went into the town and said to the people, come, see a man who told me everything I have done. Could he possibly be the Christ? They went out of the town and came to him. Meanwhile, the disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat of which you do not know. So the disciples said to one another, could someone have brought him something to eat? Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of the one who sent me and to finish his work. Do you not say in four months the harvest will be here? I tell you, look up and see the fields ripe for the harvest. The reaper is already receiving payment and gathering crops for eternal life, so that the sower and the reaper can rejoice together. For here the saying is verified that one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap what you have not worked for. Others have done the work, and you are sharing the fruits of their work. Many of the Samaritans of that town began to believe in him because of the word of the woman who testified, he told me everything I have done. When the Samaritans came to him, they invited him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. Many more began to believe in him because of his word, and they said to the woman, we no longer believe because of your word, for we have heard ourselves, and we know that this is truly the savior of the world. The Gospel of the Lord.
and let us proclaim our faith by saying together the Apostles' Creed in page 10. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the resurrection of the the resurrection of the dead and life everlasting. Amen. We know that the Lord is in our midst, and so we turn now to God to pray for the needs of the world. For the church, that we may be renewed by the living water that flows from the heart of Christ. We pray. For those who thirst for justice, compassion, and love, that they may drink from the fountain of life, the water given by Christ. We pray. grow in their desire for waters of new birth and allow God more fully into their hearts this Lent. We pray. For all who lack clean, drinkable water, God will raise our awareness of the importance of this resource and strengthen all who are working to provide it for the good of all humanity. We pray. that we may be a source of living water for all who thirst for meaning and purpose in their lives. We pray. Cardenas, Marina Stella Rojas, Mateo Yanez, for the homebound and for their caregivers, we pray. Dick Dooley, Solomon and Luna Doughton, Bonnie Fox, Kathy Jolowika, Ruby Holland, Bob Ryswick, Georgina Richetta. May they join with Christ in the new life that he shares with the Father. We pray. Oh God. who have asked for our prayers and for the intentions that we carry in the quiet of our hearts.
we pray. Oh God, hear us, hear our prayer. Lord God, you never abandon us nor delay in bestowing your grace as you provide streams of living water. Grant all our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
and blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have a bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, and it will become for us the bread of life. Bless us, God. And blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have a wine we offer you, fruit to the vine and work of human hand, and it will become our spiritual drink. And pray, brothers and sisters, that this sacrifice of the Eucharist, mine, but also yours, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. For the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and all the good. Be pleased, O Lord, with this sacrificial offerings and grant that we who beseech pardon for our own sins may take care to forgive our neighbor through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And the Lord be with all of you. And Amen. with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to our Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For when he asked the Samaritan woman for water to drink, he had already created the gift of faith within her, and so ardently did he thirst for her faith that the candle in her, the fire of divine love, and so we too give you thanks. And with the angels, praise your mighty deeds as we acclaim. <laughs> And all you have created gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O oh Lord, we implore you, by the same Spirit, make holy this gift we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this mysteries 
For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks again, he said a blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. But this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out you and for many for the forgiveness of sin and do this in memory of me. The mystery of our faith. As we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of Christ and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, with the blessed Apostle, Saint Peter, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, deacon, and the entire people you have gained for your own, and listen to the prayers of this family of St. Peter the Pastoral Parish, whom you have summoned before you, in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Our Heavenly Father, so He will guide us to have an encounter with His Son Jesus that will transform our personal life by praying together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day a daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and saved from all this stress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, for the kingdom, kingdom the power and glory are yours now and forever. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostle, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not in our sins, but in the faith of your church and grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with all of you. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. On you stay, we told his peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On you stay, we told his peccata And this is Jesus, the one we are invited to proclaim, the Messiah, our Savior. is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And happy are you, because you are invited to the Supper of the Lord. Lord, I know what is kept under my roof, but only say a word and I shall be
I was telling you of all the blessings that we receive in this parish. Those kids that are ready to make their first communion, yet it's a serving for the first time as an altar server. All the catechumens and candidates were excited about receiving the sacraments of initiation. But there's another gift that God has given us. We have Sergio and Christine Almada. And Sergio has made the decision to begin the program of the diaconate. He wants to become a deacon. <laughs> Is it like that? <laughs> That's true. You know, having tell, I want to be in trouble. <laughs> but I want to thank God because He is the one who always calls us. Let's see, to be there facing the community, Sergio. Don't be nervous. I want to be. I want to be grateful to God because God is the one who always is calling us to any of the ministries, deacon, priest, altar servers, uh, Eucharistic minister, the music. But besides God and being grateful to Sergio and Christine that say yes, because she will be participating with him in the whole five years of the program, being with him, but also, I want to thank you because you're the one 
to help him to make the decision. See in you, seeing how he can provide a testimony of his call to be a deacon. You're the one. You are the one who helped him to make such a big decision. We know that it's not a, an easy process. A lot of study, a lot of Saturdays being in the diaconate program. And you can ask Deacon Ted. But with the support of his son, Gabriel, his wife, in his mom who was going to be here and with our prayers we know that he will accomplish so let us give him a big a big blessing so and you as a family bow your head loving God you are always inviting children of your community to serve you. Today, we ask you to send your blessing to the Almada family, that they together will be walking through this process of the diaconate. And may the prayers of this family always are in the life of the Almada family. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us give him a big hand. You. What about you, Gabriel? Thank you. Your dad will be the best too. And let us pray. As we receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven and are nourished while still on earth, with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true complexion through Christ our Lord. Amen. And please be seated for a moment. The Lenten Parish Mission will be starting this Monday, March 13th, through Thursday, March 16th. The talks will be held in the church at 6.30 p.m. Our presenters will be Father Arturo, Deacon Danny Rosas, Deacon Ted Rotunda, and Deacon Matt Vasquez. We will be exploring the symbols of our faith and how to use them to enrich our lives. Please bring the Bible. Next weekend has been designated for the 2023 annual Lenten collection. Please take home today's bulletin for more information about these announcements and for other parish news and upcoming events. Thank you, Matt. And I really would like to invite you to come to this parish mission because Deacon Ted, Deacon Danny, Deacon Matthew is a seminarian who was with us. We want to create this theme to preach our parents' mission. So we will be here from Monday through Thursday at 6.30 p.m. And I will be celebrating the Eucharist every morning at 8.30 in the morning. So I hope that you will join us. And the Lord be with you. And Bow down for the blessing. Direct, O oh Lord, we pray, the heart of your faithful, and in your kindness grant your servant this grace. 
that abiding in the love of you and their neighbor, they may fulfill the whole of your command through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, protect you, and keep you safe, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.